an argument that the first thing that happens when you have rule of law is you get property rights and land titling, land governance. It's the first thing people do when they settle an area. What are the rules on how that's going to work here? Uh, and I'll give you an example, a great example. In the Sierra Nevada, when they found gold, there were 850 different creeks with 850 different mining camps up each creek. And in each camp, they hit on the same solution. They said, there's gonna be one book and some old man who can't mine anymore. You know, you keep the book. And when someone who wants to stake a 100 by 100 piece of river or something, or a piece of land, you, know, you draw the map and you make your mark in this book. And then this is the sort of book of truth. Mm -hmm. And we all agree on this creek that this is our book. When 10 years later, by the time the lawyers and judges showed up, what they did was they took all those books and they wove them together into the state law of California. Mm. Well, that gave people, once you have, there's an economist who argues that this is, this is what really let capitalism work in the West. And, it, and that once you have land titling, you have a piece of paper, a, you have a reason to improve your land, and B, you have a piece of paper you can take to a bank and borrow some money, and the bank can loan you that money because they know you can't move that, and that's a legal claim. So it sort of crystallizes rule of law. And now once I have that capital, I go and start a business or do whatever. That's how capitalism actually got traction. But his point, this guy is Hernando de Soto from Peru, mm -hmm. his point is that they, uh, in much of the world where there is not rule of law, capitalism doesn't work, it never gets any traction just because of that fact. We have been working with the World Bank mm -hmm. as our partner this year, and they are taking us by the hand. We have built out this wonderful system uh, that brings blockchain to land governance, and it's been announced we're doing it in Zambia, and we have 60 people in Zambia now running around with, with iPads, and they're going to people. We should have 50,000 by the end of this month, mm -hmm. I believe giving people title to their land, or it's really recognizing the title that they already have, recognizing their understanding of what they have is getting fed up in the, to the system, and, and the government is saying, yes, we recognize title. You know, now you're gonna be paying us $8 a year in tax, but we're recognizing that you own that hectare in that corner of the jungle and some you know, housing at the edge of cities, that sort of informal housing. That's the kind of people we're registering now. So in order to get that initiative started, you said you're working with the World Bank, but you also have to work uh, with the government, mm -hmm. right? And get everybody sort of connected and agreed, uh, et cetera. But what's interesting to me is this is a sizable investment for you to do this. How do you profit from it? Where, where, where does your profit come from? There's going to be an amazing amount of money in this. So much that at the moment, I don't really care that it's mm -hmm. costing a million dollars each six months or something. Mm -hmm. I am in part doing it because of what I think it's going to do for the world, but there's all kinds of money sloshing around the NGO world and the world of donors and stuff to help poor countries do this. In addition, we have a system designed that we can work with these governments and do this and we'll have a small residual on the back end so as this collects tax revenue for them, we get a small residual, which they seem to like, and it doesn't cost them anything up front. Mm -hmm. But to me, there's gonna be trillions and tens of trillions of dollars of capital created through this system. So what you're saying is that obviously, you see the impact this could have on the world, and the value that's created versus what the investment is is, is just spectacular right. return on investment as far as the human condition is concerned on the planet. But you're also seeing that there's going to be a you know this is an investment, maybe even a, you know maybe longer term, that says that hey you know we're going to have a little piece of what we're creating in infrastructure here with the blockchain, and when that comes back, it's going to be a huge capital return on investment. Yeah, it's gonna, there's going to be so much value created that all we need is one tiny little sliver of that value and we're just fine. What I'm so excited about is the value created. I quoted Aristotle earlier mm -hmm. that capital is potential. Well, the potential that's created when you can, can when the state recognizes the, the campesino's title and their, their ownership of this land, the value that gets created is so enormous. And what what I'm excited about is there's literally over a hundred trillion dollars of value we believe will be created and that doesn't come into the world in some central institutions. That comes into the world 
in highly fragmented ways. It, you know, every little guy and every little barrio will, his, his thing is suddenly worth something. It's worth a thousand bucks or something. And getting his claim recognized is worth, some say, you know, to them, a thousand dollars is, you know, like, is, a, is a lot of money. It's a, enough money they can get their kid an education or they can get, start a fruit stand and capitalism can start. So I actually think that I have a five year goal, five years, five billion people. Uh, I think we can do this, frankly, if, uh, well, we have, we've been doing it in Zambia. We're f finishing one project this month and it's going very well. We just signed a deal with Rwanda and we have, I believe, another large deal coming and actually governments from all over the world are knocking on our door for us to get organized and do this one place with 200 million people. Wow. So it, what this creates, though, they say, was, people say, well, it's $1,000, but it's also a foundation. It's something that's solid, you know, because in, in some, uh, especially in Africa, in some of these countries, you know, you could, you could work hard as an entrepreneur, accumulate some wealth, but it's a government currency that just completely gets debased, and your wealth just evaporates based on, you know, somebody else's caprice, as compared to saying, now I've got something solid. It lives in the blockchain. It, 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 it's a whole new world for us. Well, except to begin with, we are going to have to, people's value is going to be in their government currency. Mm -hmm. We are, that's the second level, is we've built basically blockchain central banks. Mm -hmm. So we can go into some collapsing country and say to the central banker, uh, here is blocked, here's a central bank on a laptop. And from now on to issue currency, you issue it on this keyboard, it goes onto the blockchain, and everyone just downloads a free app on their phone. What's so beautiful is, bank about 15% of the world has a bank account mm -hmm. of adults. 140%, cell phone penetration is 140% in poor countries. People have two phones. So mm -hmm. as the more of this stuff we can turn into smart tokens and apps that sit on phones that can't be corrupted, the more of these government functions actually yeah, well, like to, to finish that example, we could go into a collapsing country, say, here's your central bank on a laptop, issue your money here, here's how you get it out into the, into the financial system, and everyone just downloads an app on their phone. They have a whole working financial system that arguably is better than anything else in the world at that point. And we actually have collapsing countries reaching out to us and saying, when, when are you ready? When are you ready? Isn't that interesting? It, it's sort of maybe the uh, analogy could be that it's almost like saying, hey, the, the country that most recently is going to get cell service is going to have much better cell service than we have here because we've got the old system and they're right. getting the brand new stuff that operates at much higher efficiency right. you know, with contemporary standards attached to it. Right. So, uh, so that's really interesting. They almost leapfrog into a better system than what we have. And what's beautiful, exactly, and what's beautiful about that is for, for years ago, decades ago, back when I studied development economics, there were, I remember hearing this calculation at how many tens of millions of tons of copper it was gonna take to wire up every village in India with, a, with, with telephones. And then 10 years later, cell phones became, <laughs> and everybody skipped that step. Right. And it doesn't, wouldn't make any sense to do that step now. Well, since World War II, we of the West, the developed world, have been telling poor countries, copy our institutions, co you know, copy our Citibank, copy our Central Bank, copy our, our, our Wall Street. And our, uh, now, we go in with a laptop, and we can give them these five different functions on a laptop that it lets them leapfrog that whole thing. No longer are they trying to catch up with us and our institutions, which we have learned get corrupted. They can leap to the front of the pack with, with blockchain versions of central banking and, and capital markets. So you've earned the right you know, uh, to be able to kind of like reflect back. You know, you've, you've been at this thing called entrepreneurism business and, and your involvement in the world for long enough. And you have that sort of rare uh, context to say, you started in a pre-internet world, right? right? And, and you've, so you've watched all these changes over time, and now you're seeing not only the post-internet world, but also the blockchain world, et cetera. What, what has it been like to live and experience life and business in your era? <laughs> well, it does accelerate constantly. Yeah. It died because we thought the internet was, you know, hyper competition. I swear one week in blockchain feels like a month in the year, it feels like a quarter in the internet. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been wonderful. It's been wonderful. It's fun. Uh, it, it's really fun. Rolling with the punches, 
being trying to outthink and innovate, trying to find the people who 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 can do that successfully. It's been it's it's like a battle, but a battle where nobody bleeds, and it's a battle where you're constantly figuring out your your. It's like a big chess game. It's been it's been a lot of fun.